Hey Algebra 2, uh, today we're going to talk about sums and differences of rational expressions. We've already done multiplication and division, now what we're going to do is adding and subtracting. Well, we're going to take a basic concept that we've learned a long time ago about adding fractions. Um, when we add and subtract fractions, we need a common denominator. We can't just add the 3 and the 2 right there. So, our common denominator, the smallest number that both these go into, is 6. So in this case, the concept is we have to multiply this side by 2 to get to 6. And remember that whatever you multiply on bottom, you multiply the same thing on top. Here, the way we get from 2 to 6 is multiply by 3. And again, whatever you multiply on bottom, multiply on top. So now we have 4 over 6 plus um, 3 over 6. Therefore, now we can add the numerators. That would be 7 over 6 would be our answer. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the same concept as we have learned a long time ago. It's just now we're going to throw in some variables. Well, so what we're going to try to do is simplify. Now, our first example here, this is actually set up for us. See how the, the denominator is already the same. So we can go ahead and combine the numerators. But one thing I want, want you to watch out for is this minus sign. Since it's minus, we have to put this side in parentheses. Because when we do that, we're going to end up... Oh, and by the way, we, now that we have the same denominator, we can rewrite both numerators over the same denominator. Just like up here, you could write 4 plus 3 over 6. And that's how we get 7 6. So we want to, if there's a minus here, put the side in parentheses because we're going to have to distribute that negative. So that ends up 3a minus 1a minus 8 over a squared minus 16. So when you combine like terms, 3a minus 1a is 2a minus 8 over a squared minus 16. So you've combined the numerators. Once you've done that, you want to see is there anything you can factor. So on these original problems, don't factor anything to begin with. Wait till you've combine the numerators in order to factor. Now we can see up top we can factor out a 2 which leaves a minus 4. Okay, And on the bottom we can actually break this up because it's in the a squared minus b squared form to be a plus 4 sorry a plus 4 times a minus 4 therefore these cancel out. The a minus 4 same top and bottom cancel out so our final answer is 2 over a plus 4. So that is how we simplify. So again, step 1, if it's the same denominator, we could rewrite the numerator minus the other numerator. That's why we put in parentheses. We distributed the negative, then we combine like terms. After you're done combining all the numerator, Ask yourself, can I factor anything out? In which we could factor a 2 out on top, and we could break the bottom into two parentheses, and we were able to reduce. So that is how we do our first problem. Now our second example looks like this. Now we have three, parent, uh, three fractions here. So what we need to do is figure out what is our common denominator, because they all look different. So we have to get these all looking the same. So what I'm going to do is... I'm going to factor the bottom here just so I can see what is it that we need to make a common denominator. So I took a 4 out of here. Here I can factor out a 2. So it leaves me with 2 times x minus 4. And here I can factor out a 3. So I have 3 oops, sorry, um, times x minus 4. So I notice here they all have x minus 4, so they're good there, but here we have 4, a 2, and a 3. So if you think about it, we need all of these to be 12 to have a common denominator. So what I'm going to do to get this equal to 12, let me make that a straight line here. Again, so we've decided our common denominator is going to be 12 times x minus 4. So we need to get each of these to look like that. So here I need to multiply this by 3 to become 12. Therefore, I need to multiply the top by 3. Here I need to multiply this by 6. Therefore, i got to do the same thing on top. Here I have to multiply this by 4. 
to get that equal to 12. So now we're going to rewrite our fractions here. So now, since, we all, since all of these are going to end up 12 times x minus 4, I can go ahead and write the whole numerator as 1. So here I have 3 times 5 is 15. 6 times 7 is 42. 4 times 1 is 4. Okay? And now I'm just going to combine the numerator. That's 57, 61 over 12 times x minus 4. And in this case, there's uh, no uh, number that goes into 61 and 12, so you can't reduce that. So therefore, this would be your final answer. Again, what we did is we factored just the denominator so that we can find a common denominator. And we saw a 4, a 2, and a 3. So the smallest number that all of those go into is 12. So we had to change this to 12 by multiplying by 3, top and bottom. Multiply this by 6, top and bottom. Multiply this by 4, top and bottom. And once I've done that, now I can combine the numerators. Okay? So the question is now, what happens if they're not exactly the same um, parentheses? Or actually, our next example is what happens when you have variables on top as well. Well, we can rewrite this. Again, we want to find our common denominator. Don't worry about the numerator right now. Don't factor anything out of the numerator. Just try to find your common denominator. So here we're factoring out a 2. So we get 2 times y minus 3. We still have the 3 minus, 3y three minus 5 on top. Here we factor out a 5. We get y minus 3. 4y minus 2 on top. Again, I know you can factor out a 2 up top on that 4y minus 2, but we don't want to uh, factor anything on top until we've combined the numerators. So denominator, I see a y minus 3, y minus 3, we're good to go there. But the 2 and the 5, we need a common denominator. So our common denominator is going to be 10 times y minus 3. So this side's missing the 5. So here's what we're going to do is we're going to put this in parentheses and put a 5 out here. Because you need to multiply the bottom and the top by 5 in order to get this to be 10 y minus 3. Same thing here, we need this to be a 2. So, sorry, so we're going to multiply this by 2. Again, whatever you multiply on bottom, you have to multiply on top. So on top over here, we have 15y minus 25 over 10 times y minus 3 minus 8y minus 4 over 10 times y minus 3. Now again, we can combine the, uh, the numerator since we have the same denominator, but remember what I said on the first example. If there's a minus sign, we have to put this side in, the second side in parentheses because we're going to distribute that negative. Okay, so now we can write it as one denominator. So when you distribute, we have 15y minus 25, that ends up a negative 8y. Negative times negative is a positive 4 over 10 times y minus 3. And see here, combine like terms, 15 minus 8 is 7y. 25, negative 25 plus 4 is a negative 21 over 10 times y minus 3. Now that we've combined everything on the numerators, now is the time you ask yourself, is there anything I can factor out of the top? Okay, in which this case you could factor out a 7, which leaves you with y minus 3. And on the bottom we have 10 times y minus 3. Now we can see that these actually cancel out. So your final answer is just 7 over 10. Okay, and there you have it. So again, factor just the denominator to find your common denominator. Multiply top and bottom by 5 here to get it to 10. Multiply by 2 to get it to 10. And we distributed these values, the 5 and the 2. Combine the numerators and distribute the negative. Combine uh, like terms. So 15y minus 8y is 7y. Negative 25 plus 4 is negative 21. We factored out the 7, canceled out, and we're left with 7 tenths. So that is how you do a problem when you have a variable on top. Now comes the hardest one of all, 
what happens when see how these have been the same on all these problems with the y's with the variables now what happens if they're different so we're gonna do this problem now now this problem I see here I can actually factor this into two parentheses this denominator here remember don't worry about the top so we have a a that since that's a positive that's the same symbol so two minuses factors of 10 that add up to 7 is 5 and 2 on top here we have 3a minus 39 plus here on the bottom I want you to just be very careful with this because technically we like the a's up front so we can move this a up front and make it negative a plus 2 so let's go ahead and substitute that make this negative a plus 2 again we like geez I can't write right now negative a plus 2 we like the a's to be up front now notice we have positive a's over here what we can do is factor out the negative if we factor out the negative, we get a minus 2. And then we have the 3 on top. Now we need to ask ourselves, what is this side missing that this side has? And what we're missing on this side is the negative symbol. So we can put a negative here and then put a negative on top as well. Because whatever you multiply on bottom, got to multiply on top. Now the question is now is what does this side have that this side doesn't? It has the negative, it has the a minus 2. It's missing the a minus 5. So we have to multiply that top and bottom. Okay? And now we're going to distribute the negatives. So you get negative 3a plus 39. Now here we have plus, we're going to distribute the 3. So you get 3a minus 15. And that's all over the same denominator, which is negative a minus 5 times a minus 2. Now you'll notice here when we combine like terms on top, we have a negative 3a, positive 3a, those cancel out. And now all we're left with on top is 24 over negative a minus 5 times a minus 2. And this would be your answer because we can't distribute, uh, or sorry, factor anything out more than that. And there's nothing we could reduce. So that's how we do it. Break this into two parentheses, see what this side is missing, see what this side is missing to get a common denominator. And then we combine the numerators, and there we have it. All right. So that is how you add and subtract rational expressions. So good luck with that.